My name is Jay Cordage. Most of you know me as the Juice Man. Uh, most of you have attended my seminars or, or have seen some of the juices that I've made on network television. Well, this tape, we're going to go through how to make the various juices. There's been a lot of questions asked, but I think even more than asking about how do you do parsley or how do you do spinach or beets, to use the beet tops, to use the orange peel, etc., which we're going to show you, of course, I think a lot of people were quite interested in knowing how I started on this subject of, of juicing and nutrition. Well, I was terminally ill when I was a very, very young man, and there's a very famous doctor, the same doctor that kept Dr. Albert Schweitzer alive for 47 years. Schweitzer had cancer. I had cancer of the bladder. And he put me on juice therapy. And it was a matter of one glass every hour of carrot apple juice, a total of 13 glasses a day. You started at 6 in the morning, ended up at 7 at night. Now, we know that the juices nurture the body. And you know, if you like to live my style, it's very easy, very simple, very inexpensive. See, I'm kind of different than you. I feed my 60 trillion cells with juices, and then and only then do I eat around the juicer for my bulk and fiber. My opinion, I don't believe there's anything as a degenerative disease. I think we cause it ourselves. And what's the culprit? Toxemia, build up of poisons and waste? No, not really. That's only, only the symptoms. The real cause is really what you see here, pots and pans and cookware. You understand? It's the juices that feed you. See, it's the cooked food that causes all your degenerative disease. There's a sound, a particular sound, that gives you good health and good nutrition. I want you to come into my kitchen to hear the sound and see what happens. Come on. Now, this is the sound of good health and nutrition. You know, a woody old carrot like this, you would not imagine it to have any juice. However, there is more juice in a carrot per volume than there is in an orange. And the juice of a carrot is identical in nutritional structure as the blood of the human body. And you've all been reading, you're finding out that people that consume beta carotene on a daily basis will never have a normal cell turn cancerous. Amazing, isn't it? All these cruciferous foods. So here's the juice I'm, I'm referring to. Making this work for you every day of your life. Being your own cannery. Making your own juices. Now, I want to say a few words about celery one of the finest foods in the world for potassium and magnesium. Now, most of you, when you consume the celery edibly, you will take the celery and break it and string or strip it down. Now, I will agree with everyone. These celery strings are quite difficult to masticate, to chew properly, you see? But you don't, when you have a juicer, throw them away. The most nutritious part of that celery are the strings. They are very difficult to masticate, however, I agree but the most concentration source of potassium and magnesium are in these celery strings. Most juicers get bound up and bogged down with it. Not here. I designed this juicer to be able to take any fruit or any vegetable at any given time. You see? Very easy. One of the finest sources of natural sodium, and you are a sea of salt inwardly, lies in that celery. A fine coolant, a fine utilization of it will keep you from having insomnia, muscle cramping, premature fatigue. Tremendous, tremendous source of nutritional value. Now, we're going to switch over to leafy greens. This is the king of all leafy greens, spinach. Probably the finest food in the world 
for stimulating the intestinal peristaltic action, that, that beat of 22 beats per minute that we all lose when we eat devitalized dead or cooked food. Now, when you're doing these leafy greens, parsley included, or anything leafy, romaine, lettuce, whatever, you must take these leafy greens and ball them up and shove them through that opening on, on a spurting basis. You see? You stuff it. You don't just take one leaf at a time because that narrow gap between the, the cover and the top of the blades, that little light leaf will, is so thin and narrow, hair-like, that it will actually slide right through uncut. So what you do, you fill the hopper with your leafy greens and stomp on it. Up and down action. Now you see that green come out of there? That is the finest source of B-complex and chlorophyll known to man, plus protein. All life on this planet emanates from the green of the plant. All life. And here it is. Tremendous source of chlorophyll. Tremendous source. It's a biogenic, a healer. Not very many juicers, if at all, can do these leafy greens. This is an incredible amount of juice from that small amount of spinach. Now, we're going to switch into the wheatgrass, which is almost impossible to do. And I want to show you how I cut the wheatgrass off. Here's my flat of wheatgrass that we purchased. And we take a knife or shears and you cut the wheatgrass right at the top, right, right above the wheat grain, the whole wheat berry. And this is what comes out of it. And you take a batch of it like this and fold it. And then you use uh, that up and down action that I showed you a while. And whenever you're doing leafy greens, always follow up with spinach to wash that juice out. Up and down action, and you will see the wheatgrass juice come out of there. Now that little bit of wheatgrass will probably yield a good, with this handful, an ounce of wheatgrass juice. Notice the trickling in the juicer industry. That is practically an impossible task to make juices. Now, I like to do a little wheatgrass and then a little carrot, then a little more wheatgrass and a little more carrot. Can you see? Can you see it's still coming out green as the carrot starts to brighten up? That carrot juice is washing the green chlorophyll, the liquid green right out of that machine into your glass. Now always remember to put a carrot to follow up behind the leafy greens. They are too concentrated to take alone, the greens are. So you always dilute it, and I like to see this proportion, 25% green juice, 75% carrot juice. Now when you're doing things like beets, always use the leaves, not just the beet root, because the leaves are probably the most nutritious part of that entire beet. When you use romaine lettuce, use those leaves and outside leaves and fold them up. When you're doing things like cabbage for stomach ulcers, I always want you, if you can possibly do so, to buy these outside leaves before the supermarket strips them off to get to the inside head. The most nutritious part of that cabbage is the outside leaf to begin with. And then when you're doing things like, like the sprouts of various kind, you just make a little ball, not one at a time, but stuff them through there with that pounding action. Now that's the way to do leafy greens. Now next, we're going to show you the fruit drinks and how to make them. Now, before we do the fruit juices, I want to qualify and explain the difference between fruits and vegetables. Now, vegetables, we consider them to be our body builders. They will build the muscle, the tissues, the glands, the organs. Fruits, basically, are the body cleansers and quick energizers. Now, there's a little overlap there, but that's the way we basically categorize them. Now, all the vegetable juices that I just made and finished up with, to switch over to fruit juices. After all, you know, we don't take our juicer apart. We just go from one kind of a juice to the next. However, you do not want to mix even a drop of vegetable juice with fruit juice, with one exception. 
and that is the apple. Now, the reason you don't mix fruits and vegetables, basically, it's twofold. They are not compatible enzyme-wise. They'll cause a lot of gastritis. But there's a more viable reason why you don't mix fruits and vegetables. Vegetables have vegetable oils, unsaturated fatty acids. Fruits have fruit acids. And when you try to mix them, they will not. They are not compatible. It, it is like trying to mix oil and water. They'll segregate and they'll bead and they'll cause, when you consume them, in that combination, a lot of bloat and, and discomfort and a lot of, uh, say, uh, gastritis, a lot of problems in the intestinal wall, you see. So when you're switching from vegetables to fruit, you always want to use an apple to put right behind, and that will rinse and clear the machine out, then put a clean glass under, as we're going to do with the watermelon, and start making watermelon juice. Now, when you do the watermelon, when you eat the watermelon, or the cantaloupe for that matter, you only derive about 5% of the food value. You see, it's like a potato. If you just eat the inside, it's basically starch with a potato. Most of the food value lies in and just below the surface of the skin. The inner part of the watermelon, the edible part, is only about 5% of the nutritional value. The other 95% of the food value lies in this peeling and just below it. In fact, the watermelon rind itself, the outside green, is probably the number one source of chlorophyll known to man. So when you're eating a watermelon, you only get 5% of the food value. When you juice it with the rind and the green skin and the seeds and all, you get 100%. So this is what I'm, I'm, I'm asking all of you to do. Watermelon is the number one coolant, number one thirst quencher known to man. The number one thirst quencher known to man. And the number one diuretic known to man, superseding even freshly made cranberry juice. You see? Now, when you switch from, say, watermelon to my next drink, which is going to be pineapple, you would add an apple behind it. In this case, we are not going to do that, but I just wanted you to know that, that an apple is compatible with all fruits and or vegetables. Now, when you do a pineapple, a lot of you will take a pineapple and cut the cone off. Don't do that. The easiest way is to grab the cone of the pineapple, and it won't hurt you, and simply unscrew the bottom of it. And that's the way to decone a pineapple. Now what you do with a pineapple is start on the bottom end and cut it into a ring about an inch or so thick, just like I did with the watermelon, and then up into strips. Pineapples have a very special enzyme called bromelain that will digest at least a thousand and up to ten thousand times its weight in amino acids if you're uh, an overindulger of proteins. Plus, pineapples have an enzyme called bromelain that, and it's a proteolytic enzyme that is purported to reduce the swelling and the pain of the joints if you have any kind of joint trouble. Even rheumatoid arthritis, one of the finest drinks in the world, is pineapple juice freshly made. Now, we're going to switch over, and I'll show you another drink. There's your fresh pineapple. When you're doing grapes, you must do the grapes with the stems and seeds and all. Now, this is not bottled grape juice. This is fresh grape juice, and all you necessarily have to do is break it up into little teeny clumps like that. Now, why the stems and the branches? Don't forget that this cord, this, this vine, is the umbilical cord of life. The nutrients from the soil and the sun must come through that vine to nurture these little branches and nurture the grape into maturity. The nutrients lie in that stem. And to make the finest vintage wines, you would have to crush and ferment the grapes with the stems and all. Now, this is the simple way to do grape juice. Very, very easy. And boy, I'll tell you what it's like. It's like the finest fresh wine before it ferments and it's live. It isn't sterilized. It's fresh juice. And this is pure, unadulterated grape juice, unheated and untreated. Now next, we're going to show you a very special way on how to do your citrus juices.
Next, we're going to show you how to make citrus juice. Now, most of you are accustomed to using uh, either a manual or, or an electrical reamer. Now, when you do cut an orange in half, when you do the orange like this, you'd, you would generally take the orange and squeeze it like that. Well, you are not actually juicing. You are merely squeezing one tissue against another. and takes forever to make a large glass of juice. And all you derive is about 1% of the food value, if that. And this is nothing more or less than sugar water that elevates your blood sugar level. Probably the number one cause of hypoglycemia, you see? So you don't want to drink that. That's not orange juice, that's orange water. And like I said, less than 1% of the food value. Now, for the first time in your life, you're gonna actually see how you juice oranges. And you're gonna actually have orange juice. Now, what you must do with an orange is peel, but save. Retain as much of that white as you possibly can, because that white is over 80% of the nutritional value. It contains what we call bioflavonoids, which are vitamin C complex that strengthen all the capillaries and blood vessels of our entire body. Now, when I do this juice, and just quarter it, when I do this juice, you're going to notice something totally different. It won't look orange. It will be very, very white in retrospect. It will be very, very creamy, but, and it will be fibrous, you see? And you will notice there's one orange, and I took the liberty to peel another orange out here. I just want you to see what's coming out of that machine. You will notice that every two to three oranges will make at least one pint of juice, probably three to five times more juice than any other method imaginable. Now you'll notice this substance must be consumed immediately. Now this is what I was alluding to earlier. That's sugar water, less than 1% of your food value. This is orange juice, 100% of the food value. The same sugar that's here is in here, but it's all integrated. So there's a very slow entrance or osmosis into the bloodstream. Totally different. Now I'd like to make you the finest lemonade in the world. And we're not going to use anything like water or any sweetener like honey, much less sugar. Now I'm not taking the lemon and cutting it in half and just squeezing out the sugar water like that. The lemon oil is splittable and digestible. So what we're going to do, this is one of my world famous recipes. We call it Jay's Lemonade. We're putting into it a quarter of a lemon and adding two to three apples. We're letting the apple water be the liquid portion of this lemonade. And we are letting the apple sugar become the sweetening agent. One of the finest drinks you will ever have. One of the great thirst quenchers. One of the great drinks for the entire urogenital canal. Now remember, to have an adequate amount of bioflavonoids from citrus, you would have to consume better than 40 oranges away a day, every day of your life. If you just merely juice two oranges the way I showed you, that is more than eating 40 oranges worth of bioflavonoids, which strengthens all the capillaries and blood vessels of the entire body. Jay's Lemonade, one of the greatest diuretics and thirst quenchers known to man. So I drink this to your good health. This is one of our sons, Johnny, and he and I are going to show you how to make juices for youngsters and infants. Johnny, um, we'll turn the machine on in just a second. Now look, we use a glass, we use a glass Pyrex measuring cup, uh, yeah. mm -hmm, right? Okay, and then we have, we want you all to, to buy, to purchase a large strainer to defoam the juices. Right, Johnny? Yeah. Because the foam can't be in the bottle, right? No. Because if you put the foam in the bottle, <clears throat> these minute holes in these nipples will clog up. So what we're doing in actuality is defoaming the juice. John, let's make some juice for everybody. Turn, turn, turn the motor on. Are you ready? Okay, here's your carrots. Put your plunger. That's it, push it right through. 
Now you'll notice how that carrot goes in very easily. Okay, you ready? All right, plunge it through. Can you do it? That's the way to go. That's the way to smash. Here's another carrot. Okay, now this drink that I'm making is probably the most effective juices, especially when youngsters have colic. This is my world famous drink that we used at the cancer clinic. Okay, now you put an apple. There you go. There you go. One more. Now turn it off and we'll show the people how, how we took the foam out, right? Now Johnny's been drinking juices since he was three weeks old and what we did for him when we made the juices to begin with, because he was such an infant, we, and this is the foam you, you actually defoamed out of that uh, strainer, but what we actually did with Johnny is defoam it and then add 50%, 50% juice, 50% bottled water. But now Johnny's old enough, he's three and a half, and he's able very easily to take the concentrated juices. Probably the healthiest child in this country. The highest protein content, perfect blood sugar level, no mucus, no fat, no phlegm. There you go, Yano. There it is. You and me, kid. We're teaching everybody how to make the juices for their children, right? Mm -hmm. It's very important, mm -hmm. right? Don't you think? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay.